I'm Caroline Gleick. I'm a professional ski mountaineer and environmental activist. I'm Brooklyn Bell, and I'm an athlete and artist. And today we're going to go through some of our backcountry touring essentials and show you what's in our pack. So first things first, um, if you're going to go out onto the backcountry, um, you have to have the proper safety equipment. Um, and that is Beacon, and of course, Pro, and Shovel. And of course, the knowledge to use all these things. Yeah, and backcountry, side country, you always want to make sure that you have, that you and your partners have all of those essential items. What are some other things you bring? Some other things that I bring that are kind of like safety, emergency equipment are um, headlamp. I have a small medical kit. Um, I like to keep a ski strap on me, um, a ski tool, and um, extra batteries. Yeah, and so a few of my safety things that I throw in, I also have a headlamp and a ski strap, and I always like to pack hand warmer and toe warmer packets in case my hands or toes get cold. I find these work really well, and you don't have to keep them charged or anything like that, so it's good emergency first aid stuff, yeah. Oh, and then the other thing is, for navigation and communication, I use my iPhone, because in, in the Wasatch, we have incredible cell phone coverage almost anywhere, and then we have great maps and resources, compass, inclinometer, but anytime you're depending on something like that for your communication and navigation, you always want to make sure that you have a backup battery. So I bring a Goal Zero Flip and an iPhone charging cord with me in my backcountry kit. Bring extra TP because even though there might be a pit toilet at the trailhead, they might not have uh, TP. In terms of shovel and probe, I like to keep my kit really light so I can stay out all day. And so I kind of tend to pick more like light and fast stuff. And so I have this Memut alligator shovel and it's got some cutouts to make it lighter, but it's also just an incredibly durable blade, which is something you want to consider in the event of avalanche rescue. And then I have the Memut carbon probe, 280 centimeter length. And so for like heart of winter when it's deep powder, I like a longer pro because we have such a deep snowpack here in the Wasatch. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, um, so we get a lot of uh, moisture. I like to bring my goggles, of course, and then an extra lens. Um, and a lot of times I'll have a day um, where halfway through the day I'll be super wet. So I'll bring gloves and then I'll bring an extra pair of gloves. Yeah, when I'm touring, I like to wear just a thin pair of fleece windproof gloves for the uphill, and then for the downhill, I like a big, thick, thick pair of mittens. These are downfilled and they're incredibly warm. So that's sort of my kit for the heart of winter. Sometimes I'll throw in an extra pair of, of gloves. And then in the spring, I usually have a much lighter waterproof glove as well. So for my layering system, I like to start out with like a mid-weight or a lightweight capillane layer. This is a quarter zip mid-weight capillane from Patagonia. And then I like to do a mid-layer and my favorite mid-layer is the Nano Air. This thing is just so warm and light and breathable. So I wear this like all the time. And then I do a shell, base layer, mid-layer, then I have a shell. And then if I'm gonna, be, if it's like really cold, it's been a cold winter here, I like to bring a puffy that I can just put over everything. So there's a Patagonia macro puff and it's super warm and lightweight. And I just like, you can just throw it over everything um, because I really believe you should just have layers you can keep adding on and you should never take off a layer to put a layer on. So I like to just have everything go over each other and mix and match until I'm warm. What about you? I run super cold, um, and so I'll bring um, a synthetic puffy, but I'll also bring um, like a big down puffy um, for when I'm at the top and I'm super cold. I really like to bring um, real food, like either a sandwich or leftovers from the night before. If I am in a hurry, I will bring bars. What are your favorite bars? I really love my Cliff Bar products and I'm a big fan of these Cliff Bar gels because they're just super fast to eat and this mocha one has about a shot of espresso. So to keep me moving quickly on a long day in the backcountry, I'll usually eat a couple of gels. And I found these work really well at higher altitudes as well because when you're, when you're like 
breathing hard, my mouth gets super dry. So sometimes chewing feels like a chore. So I like these a lot. And then I've been obsessed with these cubes. And these are, they're sort of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a bar. And they're really soft and chewy and they just go down really easily. So I usually eat like two gels and one cube on a half day and then double that for a full day. And then I also like to pack real lunch, like leftover pizza or make a sandwich or just whatever food I have laying around the house. I think one of the things that can make or break a day to you is bring a little bit of chocolate. A little bit of dark chocolate can um, bring up anybody's spirits in the middle of the day. The boosts that I'm running this year are the Lang Ultra XT Freeze. They are an incredibly stiff woman's boot. Their flex is like a 110. I like them because I have a really narrow foot and I'm a really aggressive skier. The cool thing about them is that they have a hike mode, but they're mainly meant for skiing inbounds. Um, so I'll take them inbounds and out of bounds, and I'll also use them for lift access backcountry. I like a much lighter weight boot. This is the Scarpa Alien RS. When I first got them, I wasn't 100% sure I would be able to ski them all the time, but this is my third season in this pair. I've tried other boots and these are always my favorite and my go-to. They're just super lightweight. They just have one buckle that puts you into ski mode and then you just have a boa and then you're all ready to go downhill. And they tour really well. They just have like incredible ankle articulation. So you can really like extend your ski out. The cuff goes really high and they ski really powerfully. So I feel like I can still jump off little cliffs or crank a really aggressive turn and I feel really well supported by the boot. I also picked them up earlier this week when we went skiing and they're light as a feather. They're, really they're light. awesome. I think they're like a thousand grams of boots so <laughs> it's pretty light. <laughs> One product that I really like that's new for me this season is um, the Smith Code helmet. The best part about this helmet is that it has um, this dial so you can open it up to put it over your head and then close it so it's like right right next to your head. For a helmet I like the Pret Lyric helmet and it has MIPS so it's really a safer helmet. When I get my helmet I usually take the ear pads out first of all because I run pretty hot when I'm touring and skiing and so I don't like to have too much extra on my ears and then also because it allows me to really hear what's going on around me. I just wear a headband or a hat underneath. When I'm skiing in the backcountry I just like to be pretty quiet when I'm dropping in because if I hear like a loud scream or something I usually equate that with someone screaming because it's an emergency. It's really important for me to be always listening to any signs of collapsing any whoops or any other noises that would alert me to red flags in the backcountry. Other little things that I like to bring are a sun hat, um, keep the sun out of my eyes, or, and then also if it's snowing you kind of collect a little bit more of the snow on the brim of your hat instead of coming into your eyes, and then of course um, sunglasses too. Yeah, I like to bring these Jilbo Aerospeed sunglasses with me because they go completely clear, but they're photochromatic, so then they darken automatically. So if I'm going out for a dawn patrol and it's really windy, I can wear them during the nighttime and my eyes are protected from the wind. And then as the sun rises, they'll automatically adjust and keep my eyes protected. They make you faster on the skin track too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but. <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty fast today. I have like a couple of more personal things that I bring out um, to the backcountry with me. I am fairly new to the backcountry. I've only been skiing in the backcountry for a couple years now. And a while ago, I decided that I just wanted to have a deeper relationship with the snow. And so I have a snow and bike journal. I write in it every single day that I go out skiing. I keep track of what's happening in the snow, group dynamics or decisions that I've made. I can look back at it and be able to be like, oh, that was a terrible decision. How can I change things the next time? I'll keep my ski journal with me. If I want to just take down quick little notes, I'll keep like a little note card with a couple of pens and a little bit of paper in the top of my brain. I love that you keep that snow journal because keeping track of the season history and all the snowfall, like that is really critical information for avalanche forecasting. So that's mm -hmm. rad. So we've got all of this stuff that we need to bring with us, and of course we need something to put it in. 
My favorite pack is the Patagonia Snow Drifter 30 liter. I really like it because it's a really simple, really minimalistic design. Everything is really intuitive and really easy to use. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same one. Do you have the same color? I have the oh, same color. I love the back panel access yeah. of this pack, and then I love the helmet carrier that comes out so that I can not have to put my helmet inside. Like it has all the right features, but it's still intuitive and super minimalistic. And I love the big, this like big opening up here so I can fill it full of snacks and sunscreen and cameras and everything else. I chose the Mindbender because um, I was looking for something that was a little bit stiffer um, but also really playful um, and a little bit lighter. Um, I really love this ski. It's super fast um, and super flowy. Um, it's definitely changed the style of my skiing a ton. Um, it's a really fun ski. It's way more fun than I thought it would be um, and it does really well um, with the crud and the groomers, but also the hot pow in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and then on my mind benders, I've got shifts. Um, I ski um, out of bounds, um, and then I also ski a lot of um, lift access backcountry, um, but also inbound. So having a binding that is super versatile, but also burly enough to be um, inbounds um, is super great, and the shifts do just that. That's cool. Brooklyn definitely has a, a bigger setup than I do. A couple years ago, I started just skiing on skinnier and lighter skis, and I found it was really fun because it really lets me get into the powder more. And so I have the Elan Ripstick 94. So they're 94 underfoot, but they really ski a lot wider than that because they have such a big shovel. And then I have on them the Black Diamond Helio 145 binding. I just love the simplicity of transitioning. This is your ski mode and then this is your walk mode. And so it's just super lightweight, it's super easy to use. It's all metal construction. And so I just really trust this binding when I'm stepping in and getting ready to ski. And then for skins, I like to go with a synthetic mohair mix. I just find them to be more packable and to have more glide. For someone who is just getting into backcountry, I would first recommend signing up for an AVI course, but if you can't do that or you're waiting for it, a couple great resources are the Know Before You Go video series online. And they have some really great resources where you could learn companion rescue and all these different things. And it's really cool and interactive the way that they've programmed that online. Another good book is Staying Alive in Avalanche Train by Bruce Tremper. Don't hesitate to reach out to people online that you see kind of doing cool stuff or getting into it because Brooklyn and I met through Instagram and I've met some of my best touring partners online because you can really like get a sense for how they communicate and whether you're going to be on the same page or not. Finding your voice out in the backcountry, even when you might not have the most knowledge in the group, is key. I think that's a really awesome point you just made, and I think it's super important for women because there are some statistics that show that if you have a woman in your group and she speaks up, that you're less likely to get caught in an avalanche or have an avalanche accident or fatality. And I think there's something to be said for a woman's intuition in the mountains. Totally. Yeah, so speak up, I love that. Um, the other thing is, is just practice. Get your beacon, probe, and shovel out. Bury your beacon in the backyard or even just under some laundry in the house if you don't have enough snow in the backyard. And just be really familiar with your gear. And the other thing you need to make sure that you do is make sure that you read your local avalanche forecast before you go. Understand what's going on with the snowpack. Be sure that you know what kind of terrain you're getting into, whether it's simple or whether it's complex. And then also having those conversations about the forecast with your friends before you go. It's a lifelong journey. Like there's so much to learn about backcountry skiing that it can feel overwhelming, but it's also beautiful because it always gives you something new to learn. Well, thank you for watching. Thanks for checking out what's in our pack and we'll see you on the skin track.